Son of a whore. Take three. How many times am I going to have to do this? Ah, uh, so it seems I've actually lost some subscribers due to, or apparently due to, my Bath Day in the Fun Park video, since I had two more than I do now on the day I uploaded the video, and now I've got two fewer than I did that day. So, uh, so logically, it would make sense to conclude that since a majority of my views come from people who aren't subscribed, and, um, uh, and, um, where was I going with that? So, uh, it would logically follow that since, um, you know, the, uh, the majority of subscribe people who subscribe or unsubscribe are directly in response to a video that was made, you know, most recently. And this is just the truth of YouTube videos in the in general. Um, that there are some people who are just so butthurt w about me talking truth about Disney. And how it is not in any way a company that should be supported by creative people. Because they exploit creativity, they exploit the public domain for their own gain, while at the same time being highly reluctant and pushing U.S. Congress into extending copyright on, um, on creations that... Um, People today have, like, no, you know, they, they are neither the person who created Mickey Mouse, which was arguably, you know, arguably Walt Disney. Uh, there's some history on that. Um, Wikipedia is actually, like, a fairly decent source for the, um, for the source, you know, is actually a fairly... It's fairly decent at sourcing the information about um, the history of Mickey Mouse and its creation. Um, nah, nor are Walt Disney's heirs any longer, you know, alive? I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't think so. That was about 50 years ago. So, um, so yes, we've we've long exceeded the extent of the original, um, or I guess like the second draft of U.S. copyright law, but for some reason they keep extending it for Disney so that Disney can be a bunch of anti-creative shitheads. But, uh, but then what was I saying? Oh yeah, but if you think about it, there was actually like no really real reason for Bath Stay in the Fun Park to end. Why is that? Well, if it had stayed on its original intended path, which, uh, in 1999 and 2000, which were the first two years, this was just like, you know, you got a couple of people running these clubs, and they say, hey, as kind of like, you know, a thing to do, excuse me, that is outside the clubs, let's arrange to have a bunch of people meet up at Disneyland on this off-season day, you know, I mean, yeah, it's California. They're open all year round. But more specifically, Southern California, well outside the mountains. They're open all, all year round because weather permits it. Um, but, you know, they're still, you know, they're, they're peak seasons, and this was, you know, going to be on one of the off seasons. Um, originally, it was like the first weekend of November, I believe. Uh, so let's just meet up on a bunch of off season days when it's a little cheaper to get in. Um, and, you know, just, like, you know, dress the hell up, freak out the norms, whatever. And, um, you know, let's meet up on this day, at this time, um, at this attraction, meet up for dinner at this restaurant in the park, and then meet back up at this attraction for a group photo, and, you know, whatever. It's stupid, but let's do it. 
And if it had stayed on that course, there would have been no reason for it to end, because this was never a Disney-sponsored event, right? This was never a Disney-sponsored event. This was... Um, but then it was taken over in 2001, and, um, and the person who, the sole person who'd organized it since 2001, uh, had this vision for it to be something more than it was ever intended to be, and, you know, I, I really think that at some point their intent was more just to make money off of it, because, um think about it. Like, there's no money to be made in just setting up a date and time for people to meet up. But there is money to be made when you are charging tickets to rebuff the costs um, to, um, to rent um, park facilities to have, you know, vendors and eventually live music, you know, at these park facilities. So there is money to be made in that because, you know, prices change, there is going to be a little bit of extra, like, there are going to be some people who don't show up, there, you know. So, um, so yeah, I'm not buying, I'm not completely buying the whole, you know, oh, we had to end this for tax reasons, you know, unless the goal was to make money off of it, and, um, But that's another story for another time. So, apparently there are some people in the goth community, and, like, nearly all of my subscribers are somehow connected to the goth community. Um, I think I've got one who technically isn't, but I guess they just like the melodious sound of my voice. Or at least that's what it seems. Uh, so, it seems we've got a lot of people in the, or at least two people in the golf community, who are really dedicated to the notion that Disney is a place that we should support without any ethical dilemmas to be addressed. You know, even though they have a notorious history of actually, like, hurting creative people, because Face. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can bring up copyright, and oh, well, this is their own copyrighted thing. You know, this is their own copyrighted version of this, you know, long public domain, you know, story. But think about it, like, um, you know, even when you're as young as, like, you know, seven, you, you know, some of your earliest works that you are going to do as a creative, you know, whether it's drawing, whether it's stories, is basically going to be fan fiction. This is the defi- and by definition, this is derivative work. So, um, you know, people who, you know, own copyright on several items have two choices then. Either, you know, accept the fact that fans are going to make derivative works, at, you know, typically as part of the learning process. This is how you learn to be a writer and be a creator. I mean, E.L. James learned this with Fifty Shades of Grey, and now they are stupidly rich on what it is no secret that uh, Fifty Shades is just glorified Twilight fanfic. This is very well documented. You know, they just uh, change the names of the characters, you know, to publish it as its own work. And, you know, that's all fine, but, you know, because that's how people learn. You learn by doing, and you do by becoming inspired by this, this, or this. So, um, so Disney is not a fan of creative people. It is a fan of exploitation. And, <laughs> and it's very funny to me that there would be people even va who consider themselves even vaguely goth adjacent who would unsubscribe on, you know, because I'm critiquing, you know, what started off as just a stupid internet joke uh, that turned into a real event. It was intended to be a one-off and then became a two-off because, you know, there were people who couldn't make it to the first you know, to the 1 in 99, and then spiraled into something it was never originally intended to be. <laughs> in fact, my friend who was instrumental in organizing the first one, and maybe the second one as well, uh, he basically had nothing to do with the organization, and uh, from 2001 on, um, he is not the person who took over. Um, I think he's attended a couple since, you know, um, What's-His-Face took over in 2001, but um, that was just, you know, as, you know, an attending person. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, at some point it just struck me that th this was just purely a money-making endeavor, and that's why it had to end for tax reasons, which means that, you know, this is not, you know, th this is... This is another reason to be really, really glad that Bat's Day in the Fun Park is now over, because it was support for an exploitative company, and it was itself kind of exploiting, you know, a community known for hosting a lot of creative people um, as just a money-making endeavor, because I see no other reason it should have exploded to what it became from what it started as. And it started as, you know, one off-season day, <laughs> you know, in the middle of autumn, of all things. Like, th this is when, like, you know, I mean, okay, yeah, it's cold for California, but, you know, we can get as low as, like, uh, 45 degrees <laughs> in November in Southern California. Um, granted, that's at night, but, <laughs> you know, it can get that cold, which, okay, yeah, I live in the Midwest. I've lived in the Midwest most of my life for some ungodly reason. Um, but, uh, you know, so I know that that's, like, cold for California. It's cold for California. It's not cold for, you know, the rest of the world. But, um, but, um, but, um, um, so... You know, I see no reason to believe this was anything but a money-making endeavor, and if you feel so strongly in support of what was clearly an exploitative event made, you know, to support an exploitative company, um, then, you know, I guess I'm better off without you. So, unsubscribe, unlike, down the road. Uh, <laughs> If, on the other hand, you agree with me, please feel free. Like, subscribe, bell, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I've got a tip jar, I've got Patreon, I've got um, original music, which I should really be making some more of, but there's stuff going on in Spooky House that has got me, like, discouraged and disgruntled about making music. But, pfft, who knows? Um, hopefully, that will be rectified soon. Cross your fingers for me, kids. Uh, all right, sweethearts. Bats and kisses, and I love you all so very much. All right, bye-bye.